Someone once told me that in order to make a difference, you have to step up onto the ledge, push boundaries, challenge norms, and do it all without hurting people along the way. Today, I kind of feel like I'm on a ledge. I'm a white woman living in a mostly white town on the shared, unceded territory of the Squamish Ohomeo and the Liwa'ul, and I've decided to talk to you all about truth and reconciliation. Someone get me off this stage. <laughs> I don't belong here. I feel uncomfortable, and I'm scared. How many of you identify as an ally? You can raise your hands. Yeah, me too. But what does it really mean to be an ally? Do we all vote liberal? Do we read braiding sweetgrass, follow some super sick indigenous Instagram accounts? There's amazing ones out there. Do we call out our relatives at Thanksgiving dinner? Aunt Mildred, I love you. I love you. And yes, I know the weather's been unseasonably warm, but you gotta stop saying Indian summer. I've been thinking about the word ally a lot lately. It's the word that means being a supporter, invested in creating a more equitable world. But it also encompasses a power dynamic that we all live in. There is a deep history of heroism in the word ally. Monuments have been erected for the allies of World War II. So when I say the word ally, am I saying that I'd like to use my resources and privilege to be a hero to others? a privilege that was given to me by a system created to oppress the very people that I seek to help? I thought I was an ally when I started working here at the Squamish Liwa Cultural Center, this beautiful building that we lovingly call the SLCC. This job has been one of the greatest gifts of my life and deepest heartbreak. I get to work with people every day who weave into me a sense of hope, purpose, and perseverance. This job was also a fast pass into my own ignorance and complacency caused by one of the most successful propaganda machines in the last thousand years that I believe, colonialism. I think we've all been duped. I mean, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, and I don't really believe in the simulation, but it feels like this long game has been programmed. The colonial machine was designed to take over and take lands by erasing and vilifying others. So can we all maybe admit that that machine, that the system is broken? And if the system is broken, are people like me, who benefit from the system, also broken? About a year ago, I was at a town event, and a man came up to me. He'd been educating himself on the truth in Canada's truth and reconciliation. Heather, Heather, I'm an ally. Amazing, me too. I want to help them. How do I help them? I'd heard that word before, many times. But on that particular day, after a very particularly hard work week, my heart cracked open and my brain tweaked at that word, help. This is the heroism and ally that's made me feel uncomfortable with the word. I think it's time us allies realize we're the ones who need help. Even the kindest of people, heralded for their good, need to help themselves and consider we're the broken ones. Unravel what's inside of us. Witness a worldwide erasing and vilification of Indigenous peoples through propaganda, strategic laws, cultural genocide, a genocide of language. 2.15 in Tecumlups. A genocide of people. We need to take responsibility for the benefits we've been given from the truths we were never told. Revisit how does our brain work and how is it influenced by what we've been taught or what we've been not taught at all. A few months into this job, 
a Liwat woman asked me if I was indigenous. I said, no, most of my grandparents are from Ireland. And she said, oh, her husband has some Irish in him. My brain immediately went to this romantic, disnified image of settler and indigenous person fall in love and they get married and they move to the reserve and they're accepted into the culture. And in her next breath, this wise elder shared with me that her husband has Irish in him because his grandmother was raped in residential school. What an idiot I am. In that moment, I made a commitment to take the time every day to realize how a system has influenced and programmed me to be complacent and ignorant through the oppression of others. I committed to stepping out onto the ledge and do it all without hurting anybody along the way. It would be rightfully argued that right now, I'm oppressing Indigenous voices by being here, by taking up this space. It's why I'm scared. It's why this feels like a ledge, and not a ledge where I'm heroically saving people off of. A ledge where I'm willing to show up every day, see great people around me. I might fall off once in a while. I'm here to help build a bridge to the other side. Finding out how I wanted to show up hurt. I got mad at the people who designed these colonized countries. If you're on this journey, oh, you get mad at old priests and lawmakers, teachers, my parents. I got mad at myself. When racism comes into the SLCC, the staff have a policy. We do not believe in cancel culture. We don't name and shame. We have been gifted by incredible Indigenous leaders with one task. Love the person, hate the system. Love the person who's using ignorant language and violent threats into you. Hate the system that taught them that. Hate the system that's weaving together these thoughts that they think are true. Love, love, love the person for their glorious, hopeful potential to change. And if they're not changing as fast as you, as you on this journey, still love them. Anger weakens us. This isn't a competition to see who's more woke. They're just at a different place in our collective journey towards truth and reconciliation. There are times when I'm digging deep into trying to be the change that I want to see in the world, and I am lying on my couch, swollen from eating all the carbs in the kitchen, and this ding-dong of doom keeps spinning in my head. I didn't do this. Am I a settler? It wasn't me. I try to be a good person. I might not have done it, but it doesn't change the fact that there's a marked inequality for Indigenous people in this country, and as a white woman living on unceded territories, with the time and resources for a pretty diligent skincare routine, I benefit from that oppression every day. It's a bit shifting, isn't it? Uncomfortable with the conversation, uncomfortable with the word settler, uncomfortable with this quiet voice that I do I deserve to be here? Hey, it might be true, but it doesn't change the fact that Indigenous people don't deserve to be treated the way they historically have been and currently are. Right now in Canada, Indigenous people make up 5% of the population. Yet 25% of all homicide victims are Indigenous. The latest Canadian census shows that the medium income in Canada is just over $40,000. For First Nations, it's just over $23,000. Why the difference? I'm not here to convert us all to socialism, but I think maybe a more equal distribution of goods and rights is in order. Now, if your life is run by KPIs and performance measurements, and you look at the statistics, and you should, that's a whole other TED talk, you might see this landscape and freeze. I didn't know what to do, so I did nothing. I find it's good to remember you're going to make mistakes. 
It's why it feels like a ledge. It's why it's scary. It, it might not even be that far down, but we're, it's designed for us to step back and step away. It's about huge, unforgivable mistakes that haunt you at 1 a.m. When I was in my 30s living in Whistler, my friends and I made a movie, and I dressed up in fringe leather, headdress with war paint on my face. How many people have done this or similar in their past? It's okay. You can say it. I'm so ashamed, and I'm so sorry. What taught us that cruelty? What told us that's okay? This is the first time I've shared that publicly, and I've been afraid for years the photos would come out. I'm not telling you today for forgiveness. I'm telling you today because my son is here, and he needs to know how close he is in generation to something he knows is wrong. I'm telling you today to break the chain. It ends here. I'm now three years into my journey on learning how I actively participate in truth and reconciliation. Gifted with this job as a fast pass, I have teachers who are 15 to 80 years old. The community and businesses in Whistler often approach the SLCC asking, Heather, what does reconciliation look like? What can we do? Ah, how do I talk to indigenous peoples? Okay, I can give you that tip. We don't talk, we listen. I am in awe of what I have learnt by listening to the graceful sounds of the ambassadors in this building. I am struck by the care for the land, the care for the great-great-grandchildren they don't know. My mind has been changed and I'm considering things I'd never considered before. I am listening, I am learning. Which is, again, why I have no business being here. Why am I still talking? And as much as I protest, I am at moderate peace being here today because I feel like we can all talk like we're at a dinner party. And my friends can also attest that I take up at least 18 minutes of airtime at all parties. <laughs> I believe that in order for truth and reconciliation to become a reality, non-Indigenous people need to speak up. We need to be willing to act with and for others in the pursuit to end oppression and create a more equitable world, and that is the definition of ally. As a leader, am I doing something every day to create a more equitable world? Hear me out. What if Everyone in this room left here today and stepped up to the ledge. Come on, I'll carpool. There's beautiful people here. We'll pop a ride. Commit to reconciliation in a tangible way. Still, enjoy the wonder of life, love, laugh with your friends, hug your family, and there's still room in your day to unravel the propaganda that raised you up through the oppression of others. And wherever you are today, and wherever you travel, learn about the people whose territory you're on. I know I'm coming at you with a fury and with a little bit of prose and this weird way that I talk, and yes, some desperation. The thing is, I believe that truth and reconciliation in Canada has the power to transform humanity, an evolution of our motherboards into empathy responsibility, love, and action. If you're not there already, let's go to the ledge. If we're the allies, we might also be the problem. Consider lovingly that we're the broken ones and take action. Let's build a bridge. 
not as heroes, as workers. We talk 20% of the time, we do 80% of the work. The word ally still sits uncomfortably with me, but I'm not going to waste my time trying to perfect a lexicon instead of doing the work. Thank you for listening to me today, and thank you for holding my fear. If anything I said today resonated with you, if you're going to start a new journey, if you're on the ledge, nothing I said today is new. Indigenous people have been saying it for hundreds of years. So, why me? Why this vessel? Why now? Maybe that's a good place to start. <laughs>